Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at uh, boundedness, okay? And boundedness really gives us a way to look at restrictions on a particular function. And so I have a couple of definitions here. Uh, a function is bounded below if there is a number less than or equal to every number in the range. And so when we're talking about boundedness, we're always talking about the, the range, okay? Um, similarly, if there's a number greater than or equal to every number in the range, then the function is bounded above. That means there's an upper limit on the range. And if there's a limit on the, on the, on above and below the range, then the function is just called bounded. So if something is bounded below and above, we just say it simply that it's bounded. So in our first example here, example one, uh, I have a, a parabola and it's got a minimum from the graph here at negative one, negative three. And this is actually an absolute minimum because nothing on the graph is lower than that point. So it's an absolute minimum. And sometimes it's helpful to ask ourselves, what is the range? And in this case, you can see from the graph that um, since no point is lower than negative 3, no y value is less than negative 3, we can say that the range of this function is y greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay. Now, once you have the range, we can sort of answer the question about boundedness. Going back to the definition here, if there is a number less than or equal to every number in the range, then it is bounded below. And in this case, we have negative 3. Okay. Negative 3 is less than or equal to every single number in the range. You can see here, the graph never goes below y equals negative 3. And so we can say that this particular function here is uh, bounded below at negative 3. Okay. And so that was a pretty simple, um, straightforward function because it has a, an absolute minimum. Let's look at another function here. Example 2, and I have this, this graph that's drawn. The dotted horizontal line here is the horizontal asymptote. And in this case, it's a little bit more uh, difficult, a little more tricky, because we don't have any um, maximums or minimums in this graph. And so we just have to look at the graph and look at the definition. Here, looking at the y values going downwards, it's going to continue on forever. It looks like there's no limit there. There's nothing that's holding it back. But towards the top, look at the y values. It's getting closer and closer uh, to y equals positive 2. Okay? And so this is, looking back at our, our definition, if there is a number greater than or equal to every number in the range, then it is bounded from above. And in this case, uh, our range is y is less than positive 2. So positive 2 is greater than every single number in the range. And that means this function is bounded above at 2. Let's take a look at another one. This is uh, a function, and this time I've actually given, given you the equation for the function. This is f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2. And you can see from the graph that it looks like it has some uh, horizontal asymptotes here. And I'm just going to draw that in. And let's see if this function is bounded. Well, looking at the top of it, it looks like it extends on forever. So it looks like it's not really bounded from above. And looking at the lower part of the function, the curve, it actually looks like it's extending down forever. So it looks like it's not bounded from below. Okay, so when we take a look at this entire function, it's not bounded at all. Uh, however, this is this looks like it's this is a, an, an infinite uh, discontinuity, and so we can look at, at this as as two different parts. So if we were to just look at everything to the right of the y-axis, 
we're looking at everything from zero to positive infinity. And I'm using these parentheses because zero is not part of the domain. Nothing is ever going to reach x equals zero. Looking at this interval, um, and so maybe if I were to cover it up, if we just look at the right side of the graph, from zero to positive infinity, we can see that this is bounded below at two. So this line here is, this dotted line is x equals two, and nothing on the, at least for the part that we're looking at, can go below positive two. Looking at the left side now, uh, this time, again, going downwards, it's going on forever, but going upward, looks like it's limited by the asymptote. And so this is, we're, if we're looking at the uh, x values, this is from negative infinity to zero. It is bounded above at two. So it gets closer and closer to two, but it never actually reaches that point. And so looking at this function altogether, the entire function isn't really bounded, but we can separate parts of it so that it, it, it is bounded. And so we can define this as meaning uh, bounded on an interval. So the function itself is not bounded. But if you, give it, if you give it a particular interval, it is bounded between negative infinity and zero. It's bounded from above. And if you go from zero to positive infinity, it is bounded from below. And one more example here. This time I've drawn a, a graph. And I'm not giving, I haven't really given the, the uh, equation for this graph. But here it is. And you can see that it's got a peak here. So it's got a maximum. And it's got a minimum. Okay. So this function is bounded above. Since it has a minimum, it is also bounded below. And if something is bounded above and below, we can just say that it's bounded.